Margie. This is going on 109. We're done. We have talked about reflections and translations, both of which will be on your test tomorrow. Rotations will not. Um, but this is another transformation that you should be familiar with. So first definition is a definition of a rotation. A rotation is a transformation about a point P. So that phrasing of about a point might seem a little strange. It just means that that, that point would be the center of rotation such that each point and its image are the same distance from P. So if here's point A, here's my center of rotation. So this is where I'm rotating it about. So it's going to swing over here, and the distance from A to P is the same as A prime to P prime. If my center of rotation was like right here, then A would just swing right there because it's got to be about be like being on a stick and it's just swinging around. And then it goes on to say, and such that all angles with vertex P formed by a point in its image are congruent. And we'll talk about the angles a little bit more after we draw one of them. Okay. But then in the figure, A, angle A, P, A prime is the angle of rotation. So there's our angle of rotation. And that'll all make a little bit more sense when we're doing more than just a point. So we'll look at it down on the next one. All right, so to draw our rotations, you need a straight edge. Your ID works just fine. Um, having a colored pencil or two might be helpful. I have to change something on mine that's already been corrected on yours. I just didn't want to redo this flip chart because I did something weird on here. All right, so you have the triangle, but you need to label the vertices A, B, and C. I was just trying to save us some time from having to draw the original figures. This is we're going to draw this rotation with these vertices about... P, which is at 0, 0. Okay, so our center of rotation is the origin. All of the ones that we do where we're going to get our rules from, the center of rotation is always going to be the origin. Now, the center of rotation can be anything. It's just that the rules that we come up with wouldn't apply because they only apply when the center of rotation is the origin. So we're going to rotate this triangle 90 degrees about the origin. Now, it doesn't tell us which direction, right? It doesn't tell us clockwise or counterclockwise. So down at the bottom... I want you to write that you always rotate counterclockwise unless told otherwise. And there's a few different ways you can be told otherwise. Right now, you're either told clockwise or counterclockwise, or if you're not told at all, then you just know it's counterclockwise. But moving forward, we don't even have to use those words if we mean something different. And we'll talk about that here in just a little bit. Because what, because the school year has been so weird and as far as timing is concerned, and you know, we've missed days in the first semester and the second semester, and things have been stretched and grammed and whatever, that I'm doing things, these few things here a little bit out of order for a reason, and so that's causing something that we normally do before this to come after it, which is fine because you don't really need it to get through the notes or the assignment or the concept. However, I do address it in these notes and I chose to leave it in, so we'll just kind of talk about it so that you're at least exposed to it and then I will go through and explain it all to you in the next week or so. So that whole clockwise, counterclockwise thing kind of goes with it. All right, so we have this triangle here. It just says to rotate at 90 degrees, which means that we know that that means counterclockwise because it doesn't say otherwise. If uh, Right now my triangle is in which quadrant? One. So when I rotate that triangle 90 degrees, which quadrant is it going to end up in? Two. Okay, so I want you to take your paper and you are literally going to turn your paper 90 degrees counterclockwise. So make that happen. Just turn it. And now that triangle is in quadrant two. If you pretend like you hit reset on the, on the axes, so you just hit reset, so this is now axis, the x-axis, this is the y-axis, positive, negative. You know, you just pretend like this is how you look at the graph. So it rotated from the first quadrant, and now this is our second quadrant, because we're pretending a little bit, right? So now when we hit reset, this is quadrant one, two, three, four. So when it was here, when I rotate it, this is exactly where it's going to end up. So with your paper turned sideways, we're going to come up with our ordered pairs. We can find A prime, B prime, and C prime. Okay, so using our new pretend grid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because otherwise you can't, I mean, your paper should still be sideways. You have to do this whole thing sideways. So A prime is going to be at negative 1, 2. 
B prime is going to be at negative 3, 3. And C prime is at negative 1, 5. So does everybody understand where I'm getting those points from? Because that's exactly what it's going to look like once it's rotated. So now that I have figured out what those points are, you can turn your paper back to where it is not sideways and take your sideways points and just fill them into your little grid, your chart over here. This is negative 1, 2. This is negative 3, 3. This is negative 1, 5. Then you're going to take those points and plot them. Negative 1, 2 is A prime. Negative 3, 3 is B prime. So you're putting them exactly where you pulled them off of just a second ago. Negative 1, 5 is C prime. And then you connect them with a straight edge and get your triangle. So you have a, your blue triangle got rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise and ends up in the place of where my pink triangle is. Everybody okay with that? So I'm going to draw in a segment that joins P to A and P to A prime. So that whole, the points are the same distance away from P, so A and A prime are the same distance away from P. Those little segments are congruent. And this angle is a 90 degree angle. So if the center of rotation is outside the triangle, you can think of it as like a flag on a flagpole. Like here's my triangle, right? Here's my little flagpole. So if I just take that flagpole and I rotate it 90 degrees, then the flag goes with it, B leads the way, and it ends up right here. Okay, does that make sense to you? Now, I'm going to draw in one more set of segments. You don't have to. You can decide whether or not, I mean, your pictures are a lot smaller than mine, and it may just be too much on the picture. You may not even be able to tell what's happening, but I at least want you to look up here. I'm going to connect B to B prime. I'm sorry, B prime to P and B to P. So the same thing's happening. Like, you see my little green angle here, right? So my orange segments are congruent, and then this is another 90-degree angle. It's just that whole angle is adjusted. So I could, I could draw in little angles like that between every single point, not just the vertices, but all infinite number of points. We wouldn't even be able to tell what's going on, but you would, that's what's happening with each one of those points. Okay, does that make sense to you? We good? Now, it would be nice if I didn't always have to turn my paper. Now, that's going to work for you every single time, and you can get those points off like that every single time. But if you're asked questions where you don't have to graph it, it would be nice if you didn't have to graph it, right? So we can look at this and see if we can come up with a pattern. Now really, truly to get a pattern out of something, you should have more examples than what we do, but what you see and what you think is happening is really what's happening. So do you see a pattern happening here? Yes. So what happens with X and Y? They switch and you change the sign on the, the new X, the old Y, depending on how you want to look at it. But that's why this mapping is a good idea. So X, Y maps to what? Negative Y x, right? Negative y, x. Yes. Well, there you go. Exactly. Yeah, so if you so if you know this, see the problem with these mapping things though, they, they all involve x and y, and at some point when you have them all, there's, all, there's some version of all of them. Some of them stay, sit, stay in the same place and you change a sign on something, some of them you switch, you gotta be able to keep them, keep them straight in your head. But that's why if you can jot down a quick little graph of it and just say, okay, I'm going to take this point and make up a point. I'm going to rotate it and you can see what happens with that one point. It kind of makes sure that you've got that right in your head so that you're not second guessing yourself. Yeah, that's all it is. That really is all it is. We good? All right, so next page. Then go ahead and label your triangle. And yours is already fixed. I have to fix mine. Measure of angle P is 180 degrees. So we've got this triangle. We're going to rotate it 180 degrees. Since we're going 180 degrees, does it really matter if it's clockwise or counterclockwise? No, but technically it's still counterclockwise. But you're going to take your graph or take your paper and literally turn it 180 degrees because right now we're in quadrants, which what are we in? One and two. So when you rotate it, you're going to have to end up in three and four. So you rotate your paper 180 degrees. And here you are in quadrants three and four. You pretend like you hit reset on your axes so that, that you just ignore the numbers that are there. So now this is quadrants one, two, three, and four. So I can find A prime, <clears throat> which is at negative two, negative three. B prime, 
which is at 1, negative 2, and C prime, which is at negative 2, negative 1. Okay. Everybody good with that? So then you can turn your paper back around, fill those in here, and plot your points. Remember, your, our center of rotation was point P, which is the origin. And if I connect P to C and P to C prime, then I, you can see that these segments are congruent, so they stay the same distance away. And this right here is a 180 degree angle. And the same thing would happen from every other point. I just think drawing it on there, it's a little bit of overkill. You can't really see anything. Again, just think of it attached to a stick and you're just swing it around. We good? All right, so we had a pattern for 90. Do you see something for that we could do for the mapping for 180? Yes. So XY maps to what? What would I write here? Negative X. Ooh, goodness, leaning. Negative X, negative Y. So they stay put, but you just change the sign on both of them. We all good? Awesome. All right, so now we're going to answer uh, some of these questions down here. When we answer them, remember we're going to use some stuff that we haven't fully talked about. I've mentioned a few things, but you don't have a great grasp of it yet, and that's okay because you don't really need to for here. But I did want to leave it on here so eventually I could kind of bring it all together. So first of all, when would you rotate clockwise? When told, okay. So right now it's just when told. But there is another way, because eventually you're not gonna just be told clockwise or counterclockwise. You're told by the way that they give you the angles. So the other way you rotate clockwise is if you have negative angles. Now we haven't talked about negative angles, but I did. I have told you a few times that they exist, right? You've been lied to your whole life about there's no such thing as a negative angle. But there is. You're not going to have a negative 42 degrees inside of a triangle. Not going to happen. But as far as rotating and when you're on the coordinate plane, negative angles exist. Okay. Again, we have. You're not going to get any of them today because you don't still don't fully comprehend them. But um, that's that's a clockwise type of thing. So counterclockwise if it's positive, clockwise if it's negative. But I'm not giving you any negative today or anything. We'll get into that later. It's oh no. If it would only be. Um, if it's negative, it's only clockwise. You're not going to be given a negative angle and told to rotate counterclockwise. It doesn't, that doesn't really work. Um, all right, so then the center of rotation. Now here on the two that we did, the center of rotation is outside on both of them. That's why you think of like a little flagpole here. But it could be inside. If the center of rotation is inside the triangle right here, then the triangle pretty much stays here. It just spins around, and that would be like holding it right there, and you could just spin the triangle around. I could have the center of rotation on C, and I'm holding C down and just turning it that way. Does that make sense to you? But the only, and so, but the only way these rules work is if the, your center is at the origin. But of course, I could draw my figure around it, and then it would just turn around the origin. Or I could have it attached to it. Just know that the center of rotation doesn't always have to be outside. So the center of rotation can be inside, outside, or on the pre-image. Okay, so now here we're going to just talk about positive and negative again. I, it's fine that you don't fully comprehend it. You're not going to get anything that's like this on the assignment, but it does it does tie everything to rotations, like why you go counterclockwise, all that. I'll explain to you, uh, you know, in the next week or so. But positive angle measures, okay? So positive angle measures are used to represent counterclockwise rotation. Negative angle measures 
are used to represent clockwise. Because, you know, up through high school geometry, they tell you clockwise or counterclockwise because you don't have that whole concept of positive and negative angles yet. But past that, once you get that understanding, we don't talk about clockwise and counter, we are not told that type of thing. You're given angle measures. If it's positive, that always means counterclockwise. And if it's negative, that always means clockwise. Okay. But again, we'll, we'll get a little farther into that, what that means and why, all that good kind of stuff. All right. So, oops. Let's summarize this, and then we're going to use that blank space down there. So there are two rotations to sum it up. If you're 90 degrees about the origin, because remember, these rules only work if the center of rotation is the origin. If you're going 90 degrees, counterclockwise here, P is at XY, so P prime is going to be what? Negative Y, X. Right? Then 180 degrees about the origin. P is at X, Y, so P prime is at negative X, negative Y. And so these little graphs here, that's the kind of thing, if you're not sure if you were, which one you were supposed to change or whatever, make up a point, literally turn it, come up with what it is, and you'll know what your rule is like that. Okay. All right, so we're going to restate some things that we just restated again here, but there's a reason, I promise. So we know that if we're going to rotate 90 degrees, then x, y maps to negative y, x. And we know that if we rotate 180 degrees, then x, y maps to negative x, negative y. Now, before I write anything else down, I want you to think about this. If I have rotated, and I'm already here, I've already done a 90, ro 90 degree rotation, and bam, I end up wherever I am. Then to go from 90 to 180 is another how many degrees? 90 degrees. Okay, so if I'm here, and this is my new ordered pair, and I want to rotate it another 90 degrees, if I just apply this same rule again, which means I switch places and change the side on my new x, isn't this what I end up with? So we could have come up with our rule that way without even having to actually turn our paper, because that's where that rule comes from. I can actually do any multiple of 90 degrees now. So now we're going to also look at 270 degrees. Three hundred and sixty degrees and five hundred and forty degrees. Okay, so I want you to fill in the rest of that mapping notation, thinking about how many degrees it takes to get to the next one and where you ended up with. Right, I'll give you a second to think through that see what you can get filled in while I hand out the homework, and then we will talk through that. All right, so if I'm at 180 and I go to 270, how many more degrees is that? 90, right? So that means I can just take this ordered pair, apply my 90 degree rule, which is to change places and change the sign on my new x. So what would this ordered pair look like? Positive y, negative x, right? Then to get from 270 to 360, how many more degrees is that? 90. So what would this be then? Positive x, positive y. Now, does it make sense that it's just xy maps to xy? Yeah, because it's 360. So if I start here and I rotate 360 degrees, I didn't actually stay there, but my final location is in the same spot where I started from, right? It's like if you get on the track and you run around the track once, 
I darn well better get credit for running around the track once because I ran around the track once, but I ended up in the same spot. It's not that I didn't move, I just ended up right where I started from. Does that make sense to you? There's a difference between not moving at all and moving and end up ending up in the same spot. Um, all right, but all this is giving me is the location. This, this doesn't tell me how many times I ran around the track, it just tells me where I ended up. Does that make sense to you? That's, that's just gives me a location. So between 360 and 540, how many more degrees is that? Plus 540 minus 360, bless you. 180. Yeah, I know, but y'all guessed. It was like 90, and I said no, and you're like, oh, 180. Like, you're just yelling numbers out at me. Um, that's 180. So um, I'm here, and I'm going to go 180 degrees. So my 180 degree rule is just to change the sign on both so I get negative x and negative y, right? So the other thing is that 540 degrees, that kind of angle, you're not real familiar or comfortable with that, right? We haven't talked about them yet, so that's okay that you're not comfortable with it. But again, I'm not going to get a 540 degree angle in my triangle, okay? That's not going to happen. But when you're talking about on the coordinate plane, if I'm here and I rotate 540 degrees, well, I rotate, I'm here, that's 360 degrees, right? And I keep going, and I end up here because that's the same as rotating 180. You end up in the same position, okay? So if we got out on the track and we started running, you know, y'all probably lap me, and we'd like both be in the same position at some point, but you've gone 540 degrees, I've only gone 180. Does that make sense to you? So I can give you a million degree angle, and you just, you know, you just keep running around the track, and you might end up in the same spot as if you, you know, rotated however many other degrees. You with me on that? Yeah, they are possible. They're just clearly not going to be in a polygon. I mean, for a triangle, the most you can have is 180. So it wouldn't make any sense at all for me to have that angle. So you're not, they don't work in polygons like you think about angles. But as far as on the coordinate plane, which again, we will look at that stuff shortly, then they, they do exist there and they could, you could have, you know, an infinitely big angle measure. Okay. Less than 180? The sum of the measures of the angles. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, we have to do less than 180. All right, are we all good on that? So now I want you to think about this. What if I said rotate 90 degrees clockwise? Do I get to use the same rule we came up with up there? No, but if I want to rotate 90 degrees clockwise, if I start here, I'm going to end up here, right? That's clockwise. Well, all my rules go for counterclockwise. So this is a counterclockwise rotation of how much? 270. That's your rule for 90 the positive way, or the... Uh, negative way, or the clockwise. Does that make sense to you? So your clock, you can use this in any multiple of 90 degrees. You can come up with whatever it is you're supposed to have. Just think about where you're going to end up, and you'll be able to figure them out no problem. Okay? Any questions at all? We're good? Awesome.